Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today I'm going to show you how to open that date picker tool, the little calendar there where you can pick a date, right? The date picker. When your form opens. So if you got the date picker maybe in a you know the first form field and you want it to automatically pop up in the user's face, well, we can do that. I'm going to show you how to do it in today's video. Today's question comes from Shloma, one of my YouTube Silver members. See, I do read the comments on YouTube. I don't read them as often as I read the forums on my own website, but I, I try to get to them you know, a couple times a month. Shloma says, the show date picker command doesn't work from the form on load event. How can I get it to pop up in the first focus control when the form opens? Okay, let's see if we could do that. I'll tell you right now, what you think would work isn't going to work, but there is a trick, and I'll show you the trick in just a few minutes. But let's get some background first. Shloma posted this as a comment on my open date picker video. So if you have not watched this video yet, go watch it first so you understand what this is. And of course, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? That means if you haven't done any VBA programming and you want to learn, go watch this video first. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website if you want to. And in the other video, I taught you that you can make an event so when this guy gets the focus, it pops open the show date picker automatically. So if you're just tabbing, going tab, 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 pop open the box right there. And we can do that. There's a couple ways you can do it, but the easiest way is with a got focus event. So click on the box, go to events, go to on got focus, dot, 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 that opens up your code window. Let me slide it over here. All right, and now we're gonna say, do command dot run command, ACCMD show date picker, there it is. Okay, that's it, that's all you need is that one line of code. Save it, let's come back over here, let's close it, close it, open it, and then I'll just click on the box, boom, and there it is. Or if you're up here, right, and you go tab, boom, there it is. Whoop, there it is, right? Okay, now, what Shlomo wants to do is he wants to pop that open when this guy first opens. Okay, so let's try moving the customer sense field to the top of the tab order. That's the thing that makes the most sense, right? Let's make that the first field. So just visually, I'm gonna slide all these down. And let's move customer sense, that's our date field. Let's put it up here. And let's make sure it's at the top of the tab order. So it's the first field that gets the focus when the form opens. All right, so let's go to form design. We'll go to tab order. We'll find customer sense and we'll drag it up top, right up there. Okay, and if you don't know about the tab order, I got a whole separate video on it. I'll put a link down below. That's a beginner uh, topic. All right, let's close this and save changes. Yep, and open it back up again. And it didn't fire the event because the, the box didn't really get focused. Getting focus is really like a, it's a user event. The get focus doesn't fire unless you tab to it or you click on it. The form load event, and I'll save you some time, the form open event won't fire it either. Here, let's test it. Let's go into here. Let's go to the forms properties and events, and we'll try on load first. All right, we should be sitting in that got focus event. So let's just try putting this command in form load, save it, come over here, let's close her down and open it and see, show date picker isn't available now. All right, let's, I just, just for the sake of it, let's try it in the form open event. So I'm gonna cut you out and delete, actually let's go over here and just pick form open like that and let's try putting it there. All right, and delete and save it and Eh, nope, still not available. Still can't do it. All right, so we can't use this in either the load or the open events. Well, I could do it in a button, right? We could uh, we could make a button to do it. Let's uh, let's just copy this button here, and I'll put the code in here. Let's try this. Let's say um, let's say uh, do command dot go to control, and the name of it is um, customer sense. It should already be there, but let's just make sure. Because when we click on the button, it's going to move the focus, right? Okay, now let's put our command in there. Copy and paste. 
In fact, I'm curious. I haven't tested this, but I want to see if just going to that field fires the event. Let's see. Let's see. Ready? Click. Okay, it does fire the event if you do it from a button without having to put the event in there twice because you could put it in the button code too. Okay, all right. But that's still not what we want. We want this to pop open automatically when the form opens. How about if we tried a timer event? Maybe if we use the on timer event and like maybe one, you know, maybe 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second after the form loads, then we try that. Let's, let's see if that works. Let's try that. All right, so make sure we don't have anything in here. Let's go down to the timer event on timer. We're going to set the timer interval to 100. Okay, that's remember, these are milliseconds. And if you're not familiar with the on timer event, again, I got a whole separate video on it. I'll put a link down below. All right, so essentially the form is going to load 100 milliseconds later, a tenth of a second, instantaneous as far as the user is concerned. It's going to run the timer event. Okay, now the last thing we have to do when we're done with this event is say me dot timer interval equals zero. That turns off the timer event. Otherwise, this will run every tenth of a second. We don't want that. We want it to run once and stop. Okay, but now let's try putting our command in here. Let's see if this works. We know we can't use it when the form loads. How about a timer event? Try that. All right, come back out over here. Close it, close it, and open it. And oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? See, you can use a timer event. A lot of good things can happen with that, that ultra quick timer event because, um, like for example, I, I show in another video, if you've got, uh, let's say, a continuous form that's got thousands of records in it that it loads up, um, it could seem like the form freezes while it's loading all those records. So what you could do is you can load up the form with a smaller set of records or no records, in fact, and then in the timer event, load the records by setting the record source property. There's all kinds of tricks you can play with timers. And this will work even if you don't have that as the first field in the form. Let's say hypothetically this was still back down here. Put everything back the way it was. Like this. And let's put customer sense back in the tab order after family size. So tab order. Where's customer sense? Come here. Come down to bottom. Where's families? Right there. Hit OK. Now what we have to do in our timer event, though, is we have to say, before we do that, when the timer event kicks off, we're going to say um, customer sense dot set focus. In fact, I'm curious. I haven't tried this yet. That might be enough to fire that event because it's in the got focus event, too. Let's try it. I haven't tried this yet. I knew we could do it with this, but let's see. I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, you, that, that works perfectly. See, all you got to do is go to that control and it will fire its on got focus event. So it seems like the got focus event just won't run in the form load or the form open. All right, so we don't even need that line there. All you got to do is go to that control and turn the time off. If it's not the first field in the tab order, if so, then use that. Another method that I was thinking about that also does work, I'm not going to run through it though, is you could use send keys. I know, I know, I know. Send keys is one of those things that you try not to use it, but sometimes it's handy, right? You could do the same thing. You don't even have to use a timer event for that. Let me show you the, let me show you the other method I came up with. Uh, get rid of the timer event and get rid of the timer interval because we no longer need that. Okay, it's set to zero. All right, good. What you could do when the form loads is, you could go to family size, which is the field before it. Oh, someone's beaming in. Hold on. All right, so you could set the focus here and then send keys tab. <laughs> it's cheesy, but it works. Watch this. Uh, let's go back to either one of the open events. Let's go to the, uh, the unload event. Here we go. Unload. Either one works. All right. We could say um, family size dot set focus. And then we could say send keys a tab, and tab is this inside of curly braces. Okay, save it. Throw in a debug compile once in a while. <laughs> I just hit a, a new funny. Throw in a debug compile once in a while. <laughs> I want someone to make me a shirt that says that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Close it, close it, open it, and boom, there you are. So you find a field before it and just send keys a tab. 
that's the cheesy one. I actually like the timer event better myself. Um, because if you've got anything else going on automated wise, send keys is dangerous. Be careful with it. Never use send keys in any kind of automated database solution. If it's something where the user's actually working with that form, okay, fine. I'll allow a send keys. Like I use it for turning on and off uh, like numlocks and stuff. But, uh, but there you go. There's two different methods. You can either use a timer event or you can use send keys. Whichever one you want, it's, it's, uh, that's up to you. They're your Legos. I just show you how to put the pieces together. You can, you can put them together. Uh, Alex was just telling me they released new Lord of the Rings Legos, so he's all excited about that. So I'm looking forward to seeing the pictures that he posts for those. Oh, and remember, if you want this to happen, uh, not only when you open the form, but when you move from record to record, use the on current event. That event fires when you move from record to record, because right now it's only firing when we open up the form the first time. If you put that in the on current, it will always jump there and fire open that date picker for you. I'll put a link to my on current video down below. Got lots of videos for you guys. While I got your attention, if you're sick of the built-in standard date picker, yeah, it's functional and it's kind of bland. I've got my own template. It's a date time picker template. I've got calendars like this, which you can customize the colors and make it look all pretty. And I've got time pickers, including an analog clock, digital clocks, right? You could do this format, this format, that format. And these will pop up anywhere in your database, any form you want to use them on, any field, and it will get the value and return it to wherever, whoever called it. So that's pretty cool stuff, right? And if you want to learn everything there is to know about working with dates and times and calculations and reminders and moving parts and molecular structures and atomic physics, no, I'm just kidding about all that stuff. But I do have a thing called the Date Time Seminar. It's basically a collection of all of my great lessons on dates and times and all kinds of stuff. And it, it's, it's long. It covers tons of stuff. And there's all kinds of code you get, and you can do holidays and, and exclusion dates and figure out all kinds of weird stuff. So it's really, really cool. Check it out. It's on my website. I'll put a link to this down below. And so, uh, yeah, there you go. I hope uh, you learned something. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for another one. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. 
<laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.